This is Capital News 9. It's 12 midnight. Covering the Capital Region from the North Country, the Mohawk Valley to the Berkshires, 24 hours a day, every day. Capital News 9, your overnight news now. Hello and good Saturday morning, everybody. I'm Megan Baker. Thanks for watching Capital News 9, your only source for 24-hour local news, weather, and sports in the Capital Region. Here are stories making your news now. A body is found at a construction site in Albany. The victim is a woman, and although police do not know who she is, they're treating the case as a homicide. Capital News 9's Deborah Garcia has more. During an excavation site about two feet down in the ground. Police say that the decomposed body has obviously been buried here on South Pearl Street for some time, but they aren't sure exactly how long. They don't know her race or how old she was the time she died. Yeah, we've got to identify, we'll go from the start, see who the individual is, how long it's been in the ground, and then get an identification. This gruesome discovery raises questions about unsolved crimes in the area. There are at least two prominent open missing person cases in Albany involving SUNY students Suzanne Lyle and Karen Wilson. Wilson went missing in 1985 after visiting a tanning salon on Central Avenue. And Lyle was last seen on U Albany's campus in March of 1998. Obviously we have several significant high profile to college students from SUNY that are missing and it's way too early to say if there's any connection between the body found and those two students. But even without her identification, the fact that a body was found here next to these homes is making residents very nervous. Just have to watch people and be careful of who you're around now because now there's a body found over there. You don't know what to think now. It's like it's crazy. The body has been taken to Albany Med for an autopsy. The clothes and jewelry she was found with, along with the 55-gallon drum she was found in, are being examined for clues. In Albany, Deborah Garcia, Capital News 9. A second man has come forward with allegations against Bishop Howard Hubbard. 40-year-old Anthony Bonneau claims he was paid for sex by the bishop when he was a teenager in the late 1970s. Bonneau says he was homeless at the time, living in Washington Park. He says the bishop would come to the park regularly. A spokesman for the Albany Diocese said Hubbard stands by his statement Thursday that he has never broken his vow of celibacy. The bishop was denying he had a homosexual relationship during the 1970s with a man who later committed suicide. Mary Beth Anslow's fate is now in the hands of a judge. The Brunswick woman appeared in Rensselaer County Court to defend her early release from jail. The local conditional release commission let her out nine months early. Anslow had been sentenced to a year for endangering the welfare of a child after the death of an infant at her unlicensed daycare center. Capital News 9's Elizabeth Herr reports. There are always two sides to a story. In Mary Beth Anslow's case, it's whether or not the Brunswick woman's early release is legal. It's now up to a judge to settle the argument over whether she had reapplied for early release or whether the commission's decision was simply reconsidered. It was a denial then, it's still a denial. Special Prosecutor Robert Wynn and Attorney E. Stuart Jones say the case is a no-brainer. In black in the center of that memorandum denial, they wrote the word denied. That was in December on the original application. That means Anslow would have had to wait until January 19th to reapply, but she put in a second request two weeks earlier, and that was granted. Wynn and Jones point out that was too early. Anslow's defense, on the other hand, says she never reapplied, but asked for reconsideration. Because the statute says that it, if there is no majority, there can be no determination either granting or denying the application. And all of the years of operation of the Conditional Release Commission, there had never been a split vote before. So it all comes down to reapplication versus reconsideration. If the judge finds the commission did in fact grant Anslow's second application, then her early release was illegal because she was released even before she would have been eligible to reapply. Ken Marbit's three-month-old daughter died under Anslow's care at her unlicensed daycare center almost four years ago. This little girl suffered the greatest loss there is. And it leaves an empty spot. 
And if justice is not served, there is no justice to be had, and there's nothing to stop others from doing it. The judge is expected to make a ruling within the next week. Anslow's defense attorney says if his client is sent back to jail, there will most certainly be an appeal. In Troy, Elizabeth Herr, Capital News 9. Residents will not be returning to this multi-family home in Troy tonight. Fire broke out on the third floor of the brick structure at Old Sixth Avenue and Hutton Street. When firefighters arrived, the fire was fully involved, but everyone inside managed to get out safely. It took officials 30 minutes to contain the blaze. Well, the guys did a great job of getting in there and knocking it down. They had heavy fire condition. There's no word on when residents will be able to return. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Berkshire County's new district attorney will have to wait to be sworn into office. Governor Mitt Romney was scheduled to travel to the Berkshires today to swear in David Capeless as interim Berkshire County DA. The weather forced him to cancel that trip. Capeless will replace the late district attorney Gerard Downing, who died of a heart attack in December. He had been serving as the Berkshire first assistant DA. Capeless will serve as the interim DA until a special election is held in November. Another downtown Pittsfield building will be getting a makeover. A group of three real estate investors recently bought the Melville building on the corner of North and Melville Streets. The group, made up of Richard Kilman and Charles Gann of Pittsfield and Dana of Northampton, plans to replace the roof and windows and make significant renovations to many of the 23 apartments. We feel we have a big commitment downtown in this particular neighborhood with the YMCA, the Girls and Boys Club, and the, and the CYC directly across and we're going to put every effort into trying to keep tenants that will be respectful for this neighborhood. Mayor Jim Roberto said the three men have his full support as the city tries to breathe life back into its downtown. Plans for new Mayfield Town and Village Hall are moving forward. For the last two years, officials have worked on the project to construct one municipal building for both the town and village. The board is looking to expand the current hall instead of constructing a new complex. Town Supervisor Carol Hart says the town has outgrown the current building and more space is needed to better serve the community. There's a lot of people that confuse the town hall and the village hall. We're both located in the village, but one is the town hall and one is the village hall. And there's a duplication of services, electric, the building, the telephone, you know, things like that. And we just think we can work better together. Hart says she is hoping to break ground this year. The board meets again next month. City leaders in Amsterdam take the next step to revitalizing downtown. Mayor Joseph Emanuel presented state DOT officials with the results of the city's four-month traffic study. The study is part of the city's master plan to encourage drivers to stop and shop downtown instead of just driving right through the city. It is now up to the state to review the Officials in the village of Lake Placid are hoping the movie Miracle will bring more tourists to the area. Officials with ORDA, the Olympic Regional Development Authority, and the Lake Placid Essex County Visitors Bureau believe the movie's spotlight on the Adirondack Village will bring more people there year-round. Miracle depicts the U.S. Olympic hockey team's gold medal win at the 1980 Winter Games in Lake Placid. They'll take a look at where the game was played, and they'll get excited about it, and hopefully we can have them stay an extra night or two. We feel that it's, it's going to make for uh, an, you know, an even busier time for us, which is great. The movie has already sparked a huge increase in the sale of replica 1980 USA hockey jerseys. Despite the cost, which is around $100, some stores in Lake Placid are just about sold out. You're just in time for another Weather on the Nines here in Capital News 9, and it looks like we'll take the turn from the wet weather into some snow showery weather during Saturday, near 30 degrees, and there could even be a few flurries or snow showers in the area by that time, and it could even coat the ground, especially in the hill towns, and especially on east of Albany, northwest at 5 to 15 miles an hour. As we're looking at the jet stream just pumping a lot of moisture at upper levels of the atmosphere and some lift bringing some spotty rain and freezing rain to a lot of the area. The freezing more likely in the northern areas. A front getting hung up but a new low developing around Cape Cod pitching some precipitation back into our area. And again, uh, temperatures borderline right around the capital region could bring rain or freezing rain or drizzle through the early morning hours. But a vast upper level low that was back over about 24 to 36 hours ago, nudging eastward, and it has cold air connected with it, so we'll turn progressively colder Saturday as we see a few occasional snow showers in the area, and then drier weather, but cold for Sunday. 
So we're looking at that wintry weather continuing with spotty light rain and maybe patchy freezing rain or drizzle. Some areas of fog too as the wind lightens up and some morning snow showers as we change the air mass. 30 degrees overnight and we'll see the snow showers around in the morning and then 33 turning colder during the afternoon and windy too. And colder still by Saturday night will be 12 and then by Sunday a chilly day only about 22 degrees and getting back into the teens again for Sunday night. More weather coming up. Coming up next this evening, the search for a missing 11-year-old Florida girl ends in tragedy. And the Democratic presidential candidates gear up for this weekend's contests. Stay with us. You're watching Capital News 9. Time now to take a look at stories making news from around the Northeast. Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney meets with several gay couples. They're asking him to drop his support for a constitutional amendment that would ban gay marriage in Massachusetts. Romney was not swayed and intends to have Massachusetts voters decide the matter. The marriage amendment is eighth on a list of 11 proposed amendments for constitutional convention on Wednesday. Federal and state agents are investigating the discovery of a powdery substance at Connecticut's Bradley International Airport. It was found at the airport's post office and is the third such discovery in Connecticut this week. Discoveries of powder in Wallingford and Bridgeport turned out to be harmless. A sample of the powder found at the airport was taken to the Department of Public Health for testing. Now here are some stories making news beyond the Northeast. The body of 11-year-old Carly Brochia has been found. Brochia was last seen alive Sunday when a surveillance camera caught images of her being led away by a man. Her body was found late Thursday night in a church parking lot in Sarasota, Florida, after the suspect in custody gave police information as to her whereabouts. We had hoped that we could have brought her safely back home, but unfortunately, the circumstances did not allow that to be. I, uh... I just want to thank all the people behind me and all the people that were behind them in, the, in their efforts to find my daughter and um, the community that was so involved and uh, for the part that you people, the media, played. I uh, just want to thank everybody for all they've done. Investigators are not releasing any information surrounding Carly's death. The man seen in the video grabbing the girl was Joseph Smith. He had been in custody on unrelated drug charges and now has been charged with kidnapping and murder. John Kerry is expected to be nearly unchallenged in this weekend's presidential contest. Michigan, Maine, and Washington State are on the Democratic frontrunner's schedule. Kerry continues to gain momentum as he picks up key endorsements, including that of Missouri Congressman and former candidate Dick Gephardt. John Edwards continues to campaign hard, but says he does not believe he has to win in this weekend's caucuses, just play second. Edwards took his home state of South Carolina earlier this week. He and General we Wesley Clark were in Tennessee and Virginia today. And Howard Dean is in Wisconsin. He canceled his Virginia appearance to focus solely on the state. The former Vermont governor has told supporters that a loss in Wisconsin will end his candidacy. For more on these and other national and international stories, turn to CNN on Time Warner Cable. CNN and Capital News 9. Your news now. New Yorkers boast more confidence, U.S. Airways post another red quarter, and stocks move higher. I'm Christina Krawczyk with your Capital News 9 business update. We may be behind when it comes to the rest of the nation, but as far as the state is concerned, we're ahead. That's right, consumer confidence is at its highest level in two years. The Siena College Research Institute posted the index. It claims all buying plans are up, including major home improvements, home buying, and cars and trucks. Now, the index does have a margin of error of plus or minus 3.9%. And good news for U.S. Airways. The company posted a net loss of $98 million in the fourth quarter of 2003. Good news, you say? Well, that number is actually up from the $794 million loss in the fourth quarter of 2002. 
Company CEO David Siegel says although gains were made to reduce losses, the company is still behind on its plan to achieve sustained profitability. From high in the sky to high on the ground, the monthly job report gave some hope to investors of a recovery in the struggling job market. The Dow pulled in 97 points, ending at 10,583. The Nasdaq Composite gained 44 points to 2,064. And the S&P 500 grabbed 14 points, finishing with 1,142. Now here's a look at your local stocks. Well, that does it for your Capital News 9 business update. I'm Christina Kwachuk. Hi, everybody. I'm Damian Andrew. Time for your look at sports. Both RPI and Union on home ice this weekend. The engineers came into Friday night's game against St. Lawrence, having won six of their last eight. But the engineers lose 3-2. Kevin Croxton scored his team-leading 13th goal of the season in that one. Over in Schenectady, the Dutchman get a big win over Clarkson. 3-1 is your final. Headlines back in 1954, RPI wins NCAA Hockey Championship. The Engineers beating Minnesota for their first ever national title. Now members of that team in Troy this weekend to celebrate the 50th anniversary of what was a big moment in college hockey. River Rats lose at Philadelphia 5-2. Now to football, Giants defensive tackle Keith Hamilton has retired after 12 seasons in the NFL. He's fourth on the Giants career sacks list sixth in games played. Finally, Trot Nixon re-ups with the Red Sox for three years. I'm Damian Andrew. More sports in 30 minutes. You're just in time for another Weather on the Nines here on Capital News 9 as we take a look at some of the stats uh, from a kind of a stormy Friday. The first Friday in February, coming in with a high of 35 very late in the day and into the evening. So that broke the uh, threat of ice right around Albany, with 32 being the average this time of the year. The record high, 55. And the morning low as the flakes were flying, 21 degrees, 7 degrees above average, minus 20 being the record in 1948. Some of the snowfall totals that we saw, Albany with all the crust on top of that snow came out to two inches, Gloversville a couple, and Skodak with three, South Glens Falls four, and then even a glaze on top of that, and Catskill to the south came in with four inches and then turned to rain right along the Hudson Valley. Up in Warren County, Pottersville four, Fort Ann in Washington County four, and down in Columbia County we had Ghent with four inches, Cairo with three, and Rotterdam with two inches of snow and a mix. So that two inches brings us up to 8.1 for the month of February. That's compared to the average of three, over five inches above the average. And for the season, 50.2 now is 11.1 above the average. So we're still running above for the season, but look at last year, 78.5. So we're not even close to that, but uh, there's always time. Looking at some drying coming in from the north, but even under these clouds, we were seeing some snow finally changing to freezing drizzle around Montreal and a little bit of a mix in the north country down to about the capital region as those temperatures were dropping off and leveling off pretty close to freezing and below uh, to the north and on into New England. Now a lot of energy in the game, upper level low to the west allowing some more light precipitation and spotty precipitation to move over us in the early morning hours so there could still be that period of rain transitioning to drizzle and some patchy fog too as our upper low drives those winds of moisture up on over us. But then the colder air builds in aloft during Saturday, brings an unstable atmosphere and some snow showers that could even uh, coat the ground briefly in some areas, especially in the hills. And then following that, the whole trough moves on through by Sunday and makes us cold and pretty dry. So spotty light rain and in the colder pockets, patchy freezing rain or freezing drizzle. And we expect to be descending down around freezing in uh, the Albany area too. Some areas of fog could be dense and morning snow showers finally as we change air masses. 30 the overnight low as drizzle could freeze in spots. Snow showers 36 in the morning then will drop in the afternoon with windy weather. The sun could make an appearance too, 33 degrees. Then we really drop to 12 by Sunday morning with a breeze too, 22 only Sunday so a dramatic change. Then from 13 we go to 33 on Monday. Then as we go toward the middle of the week, not that chilly, temperature gets to freezing or a little bit warmer Tuesday and Wednesday, chance of some passing snow showers. Then turning a little bit colder again by Thursday and Friday, 
Uh, there is a chance of a coastal low coming up on Wednesday, but right now it looks like it'll stay south of us. Coming up next, new research shows implants may hide signs of breast cancer. Health Team 9 takes a look right after the break. Stay with us. Health Team 9 is sponsored by Glens Falls Hospital, Big City Medicine, Hometown Care for the North Country and Saratoga regions. Doctors often say the key to beating breast cancer is catching it in its early stages, but breast implants can sometimes make that a difficult task for doctors. Here's Julie Chapman with today's Health Team 9. Take a look at the questions here. So I see you have implants. Millions of women have breast implants. In fact, implants are the third most common type of plastic surgery, and the trend is on the rise. But those women may not know that implants could hide breast cancer. We found that uh, that breast implants interfere with the detection of breast cancer. That's the finding of a new study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Dr. Diana Migliaretti and her colleagues compared the results of more than one million mammography films of women with and without implants. Screening mammography missed 55% of breast cancers in women with breast implants compared to only 37% of breast cancers in women without implants. The implant shows up as a solid white mass, blocking the view of the breast tissue on the mammography film. There is no way to fix the problem 100%, but there is a way to get around the implant for better views, called implant displacement views. And then we'll be doing films with the implant in place, and then we'll push the implant back. These views attempt to move the implant out of the way to maximize the amount of breast tissue that they can see on the mammogram film. Dr. Migliaretti was surprised that even though breast cancer was missed more often in women with implants, once the cancer was detected, it wasn't in a more advanced stage than the women who caught the cancer earlier. Women with breast implants are encouraged by their physicians to check their breasts regularly for any problems with the breast implant, so this may make it easier for them to find the tumors themselves. And while mammograms missed 55% of breast cancer in women with implants, they are still the most effective method of detecting breast cancer in women with or without implants. With Health Team 9, I'm Julie Chapman. For more information, you can head to our website, capitalnews9.com. Still ahead, we'll take a look at some of the icy conditions around the capital region today. Plus a recap of our top stories. Stay with us. Your Weather on the Nines with Mike Bono is minutes away. We'll be right back. up toward the bottom of the hour time for another weather on the nines here on capital news nine as we see the rain and the drizzle and the freezing drizzle transition towards snow showers early in the morning on saturday about 30 degrees around town northwest of 5 to 15 miles an hour and uh, some of those snow showers could even coat the ground especially in the hills and on east of albany as that seems to be where all the moisture is headed and a new load developing around cape cod but even though the clouds look thinner, we have seen pockets of rain and even freezing rain and sleet up to the north. Even up to Montreal, it finally changed over to some freezing drizzle. But that low is still cranking to the west and dragging the moisture up, a little bit of lift, and a new area of precipitation uh, getting started that could just leave some patchy precipitation in our area. So spotty light rain or even freezing drizzle, areas of fog, morning snow showers as we go down to 30, up to 36. Capital News 9, your overnight news continues. Welcome back. I'm Megan Baker. Thanks for watching Capital News 9, your only source for 24-hour local news, weather, and sports in the Capital Region. Here's a recap of our top stories.